One morning, the dull ache in my belly sharpened into unmistakable contractions. My firstborn, eyes wide with a mix of confusion and fear, watched me sink onto the couch. Get mommy to the hospital, Fatty. She piped up, her voice attempting nonchalance despite the tremor in it. My husband, Ty Askew, was frantically stuffing papers into a briefcase. My daughter's forced bravo crumbled into tears. He whipped around, annoyance etched on his face. Absolutely not. I have a business trip. My pleas, choked with pain, were met with a dismissive grunt. He grabbed his suitcase and stopped towards the door. Contractions, can't move. I stammered, a desperate plea that hung heavy in the air. The slam of the front door was my only answer. He left. Left me, his wife, in the throes of labor, for a business trip. The betrayal burned like a supernova. Forgiveness, not a chance in this lifetime. This is Melanie Senior, 33 years old, a working mom juggling career and kids. But before we get to the present, let's rewind. My story starts with the Singer family, my dad, a rock solid 62, and my brother, four years my senior. We lost mom to illness when I was just a kid. Her warmth and gentle spirit are still etched in my memory. Despite their grief, dad and my brother built a fortress around me, showered me with love, and helped me weather the storm. Words can't express how grateful I am to them. Fast forward to college graduation, I landed a regular office job. Then in my late 20s, a well-meaning co-worker set me up on a blind date. Enter Jonathan Spencer, soon to be husband. He was a sales manager at another company, apparently a rock star in his field. After two years of dating, he popped the question. We were ecstatic, but a knot of worry formed in my stomach. Growing up under my dad and brother's protective wing, a seed of doubt had been planted what if they objected? To my surprise, Dad choked back tears and said, Melanie getting married. Mom would be over the moon. You deserve all the happiness. My brother practically burst with excitement, adding, congrats, and tell Jonathan welcome to the family. Seeing Dad and my brother so happy brought me to the brink of tears. Relief washed over me as we visited Jonathan's parents, kind, down-to-earth folks. Both families showered us with blessings, and our marriage was official. We rented a cozy apartment, striking a balance between our families, and our life together blossomed. Jonathan even pitched in with chores, making newlywed bliss a reality. Then came the cherry on top, pregnancy. Jonathan was ecstatic, mirroring my joy. Once I hit the safe zone, we shared the news with everyone. My dad and brother practically burst with pride a grandchild. Dad boomed, his eyes welling up. Nothing could make me happier, Melanie. You take care, all right. My brother echoed the sentiment, adding, uncle of the weights. Can't wait to meet the little one. My in-laws were equally supportive, urging Jonathan, make sure she has everything she needs. His dedication soared. He took on more, lightening my load. Finally, our beautiful daughter arrived a gift cherished by both families. Happiness overflowed, but then came the reality of raising a newborn. Paternity leave wasn't an option for Jonathan, so the childcare Ryans fell to me. It was a whole new level of tough. Our daughter, a champion crier, demanded constant attention. She'd only sleep in my arms, the crib a guaranteed recipe for whales. Initially, Jonathan helped, but slowly, his support dwindled. Nighttime became a battle cry. Ah, oh, the noise. He groaned. Can't she just stop? Newborn cries are a package deal, I'd explain, frustration simmering. His annoyance remained. Field work tomorrow, got to rest. Haven't slept in ages, he'd mumble, retreating to the living room. Can't we take turns? I'd plead, but his response was a dismissive shrug before sleep, claimed him. It felt like a one-woman show, and the resentment began to fester. They say parenthood can test even the strongest relationships. While Jonathan and I were sailing smoothly pre-baby, I never imagined things would get so strained. Lost in the trenches of childcare woes, our relationship became an afterthought. Meanwhile, 
Jonathan remained largely in I.A. around the house. Work, he claimed. Exhausted but determined, I swallowed my frustration, clinging to the belief that he was providing for us. Then, a surprise, pregnancy number two. Jonathan's reaction, a shrug. Disappointed, but not deterred, we bossed in the well wishes from our families once again. This time around, though, the nausea hit like a freight train. All day sickness kept me glued to the couch. Work offered a compassionate break, which I took like a lifeline. So there I was, a housebound seasick mess, single-handedly wrangling a toddler. The house chores became an insurmountable Everest. One morning, my body simply refused to cooperate. Jonathan swaggered in, oblivious to my state. Mealtime, babe. Where's the magic? I managed Courtney's plate, but cooking for him was beyond me. Frozen dinner, please? I croaked, hoping for a shred of understanding. His response was a cold glare. You're home all day. Have you even cleaned? Explanations fell on deaf ears. Pregnancy isn't an illness, he scoffed. Don't use it as a crutch. Get dinner on the table. Nausea clawed at my throat, sending me scrambling to the bathroom. Even from there, I could hear his harsh words. Don't play this card. It's tough on me too, you know. Little Courtney, sensing my distress, reached out with a gentle pat on my back. Jonathan, ever the charmer, punctuated the moment with a dramatic sigh. Just do your job. No food, no peace. Tears stinging my eyes, I mustered every ounce of strength to cook that meal. The Jonathan I knew during Courtney's pregnancy, kind, supportive, had vanished. Now I was stuck with this demanding stranger. Despite the confusion gnawing at me, I clung to the marriage. Yet here he was, often absent, yet expecting a spotless house and single-handedly managed childcare. Any deviation triggered lengthy lectures, delivered from his throne on the couch. Sitting on the floor, feeling utterly defeated, the D word, divorce, echoed in my head. But the image of my father, brother, and everyone who celebrated our marriage held me back. The thought of ripping Courtney and the unborn baby from their father was unbearable. As the due date loomed, I pleaded with Jonathan to cut back on work. His response, more overtime. Then, a week before the big day, the unmistakable ache in my belly seized me in the dead of night. It felt too early, but the contractions were a steady 20 minutes apart. Hospital time, I thought, anxiety gnawing at me. Morning arrived. Jonathan, I managed as he stirred. Contractions, I think it's time. He didn't even look up, just shuffled past on his way to get ready. The pain intensified, entering me to the spot with a groan. Little Courtney rushed over, concern etched on her face. Mommy, are you all right? Does your tummy hurt? I wanted to explain, but another wave of pain stole my breath. Frustration laced my voice as I directed at Jonathan. Get me to the hospital. Now. Across the room, Courtney's voice cut through the air, tinged with a touch of panic. There's no way, she exclaimed. Jonathan, calmly adjusting his tie, turned with a furrowed brow. A business trips. Now. Speechless, I watched as Jonathan, without a word, retreated to his room, suitcase clattering behind him. A slam resonated through the apartment as the front door shut with decisive finality. I can't believe this, I muttered, the beginnings of frustration bubbling up. I'm in labor, stuck here. My voice trailed off, replaced by a frantic edge. Jonathan, come back, but the only response was the echoing silence in his wake. Anger flared, quickly replaced by a surge of determination. Fine, I thought, grabbing my phone. If he won't be here, I'll find someone who will. With trembling fingers, I sent a message to the family WhatsApp group, a frantic plea for help. Relief washed over me as just 30 minutes later, the familiar faces of my father and brother appeared in the doorway. The sight brought tears to my eyes, tears both of relief and frustration. My brother, ever the picture of action, scooped me up gently. All right, let's get you out of here, he said, a reassuring smile playing on his lips. Dad, a confused furrow etched on his brow, took Courtney's hand. 
What on earth is going on with Jonathan? I couldn't help but wonder as we piled into the car. The pain, thankfully, began to ebb and flow, offering a brief reprieve. He's on a business trip. I managed to explain between contractions. Both my father and brother exchanged a look of disbelief. Jonathan, my father scoffed, of all times. The hospital loomed ahead, a beacon of hope. By the time we arrived, the contractions were relentless, occurring every five minutes. Soon, I found myself on the delivery table, surrounded by a flurry of medical professionals. Hours flew by in a blur of pain and exertion. Finally, the midwife placed a tiny, squirming form in my arms, a healthy baby boy. Just in the nick of time, she remarked, wiping sweat from her brow. Another few minutes and we might have had a different story. Courtney, wide-eyed, gazed at her new brother with a mixture of fascination and curiosity. As my father leaned in close, his voice laced with concern, he'd offered a suggestion that would change the course of things. Exhausted but relieved, I knew this wasn't the home I envisioned for my newborn. With a second child to care for, the hospital stay was brief, five days to be exact. But when the time came to leave, I surprised everyone with my decision. Home wasn't where Jonathan was, Home was with my family, so it was to my parents' house that we went, ready to embark on this new chapter together in the whirlwind of childbirth and early newborn care. Contacting Jonathan had been impossible. But a week later, as Courtney and I tackled some unpacking in the old apartment, the intercom buzzed. It was Jonathan, finally arriving at my request. Hey dad, Courtney. Dad's back. Is the little guy adorable? Courtney's reply hung heavy in the air. He's not here anymore. Jonathan's face drained of color, a forced chuckle escaping his lips. What? The little sprout went on a trip already. Footsteps echoed in the hallway, growing louder until the door creaked open. Jonathan stepped inside, confusion swirling in his eyes. Mel, what's going on? Where's the baby? He's not here, Jonathan. I replied evenly, gesturing towards the stack of cardboard boxes behind me. Only Courtney and I are currently in residence. Trying to focus on the task at hand, I ignored his next outburst. Hey, where'd our son go? He bellowed. The sight of Jonathan's pale face sent a tremor through me. With a controlled voice, I explained, our son, as you phrased it, is safe at my parents' house. And the reason he's not here is quite simple. You weren't here. A wave of relief seemed to wash over Jonathan as he sank onto the nearest chair. His reaction left me bewildered. Had it all been a bad dream? Hold on, he sputtered, finally noticing the boxes. What's with all the cardboard? I'm moving back to my parents' house, I announced. Jonathan's face flushed crimson. What? Are you serious? How can you say something so selfish, he roared. Leaving your husband behind like this? What were you thinking? Just then, my father emerged from another room. Jonathan, harboring a long-standing inferiority complex towards my judo master dad, visibly shrunk back at the sight of his imposing figure. This wasn't going to be a comfortable conversation. My dad, ever the voice of reason, interjected, hold on a minute, what exactly is going on here? Jonathan stammered, well, you see, I, I couldn't reach you directly, so I called your company. They told me you weren't on a business trip, just a day off. Apparently, they were under the impression you were dealing with a family emergency, a hospitalized relative causing some inconvenience with important meetings. Speaking of family, who exactly got sick? Actually, Jonathan mumbled, his color draining faster than a sink with a clogged drain. It was my mom. Dad raised an eyebrow. Funny thing, I just spoke with your mom, and she seems perfectly healthy. Both of them, in fact. Jonathan's eyes darted around the room, finally landing on me. I let out a heavy sigh. So, this business trip, or family crisis, wasn't quite the whole story, was it? I asked, my voice laced with steely resolve. No, no, absolutely not. Jonathan sputtered defensively. But the jig was up. I pulled out a stack of evidence incriminating messages with another woman, 
explicit photos that left no room for doubt. Explain these, I demanded, tossing them onto the table. Seems you were a bit too busy flirting with a junior colleague on WhatsApp to be the devoted husband you pretend to be. Jonathan opened his mouth to protest, but before he could get a word out, my father, ever the protector, stepped in. With a swift, almost effortless movement, he delivered a textbook judo throw, sending Jonathan sprawling to the floor with a pained groan. Consider this a slap on the wrist, Dad growled. But trust me, the pain you inflicted on my daughter is a thousand times worse. Taking a deep breath, I placed a document in front of my still groaning ex-husband. We're getting a divorce, I declared. Primary custody of the kids goes to me. You'll be responsible for covering the cost of your little affair and providing adequate child support. The rest, well, let's just say your karma is about to hit you like a freight train. With that, I packed up my belongings, said goodbye to the old life, and walked out with Courtney and Dad by my side. The divorce went through with me receiving a settlement and securing decent child support. I even managed to hold the other woman accountable, and karma took care of the rest. Rumors flew at her workplace, leading to her resignation. Jonathan, now branded as a cheater, found himself demoted and trapped in a dead-end job. The financial burden of child support meant even his best efforts wouldn't offer much upward mobility. He lost his family, his reputation, and any hope of a comfortable future. It was a perfect illustration of reaping what you sow. Jonathan's current situation is, well, let's just say it's not ideal. While I wouldn't say I enjoy his misfortune, it does feel like a dose of justice. Meanwhile, we've settled back into my parents' house, a fresh start for all of us. Thankfully, Courtney, who never had a strong bond with Jonathan, seems to be adjusting well. My brother, bless his heart, turns out to be a natural with kids. His background in childcare has been a lifesaver, allowing me to focus on rebuilding our lives. My priority now is cherishing the ones I love, my wonderful family, watching my children grow up happy and healthy, all the motivation I need to embrace the future with open arms. Thanks for watching and being part of this storytelling adventure. Click the subscribe button to support our storytelling channel.